everyone, welcome to the channel. I'm Rich. And I'm Kathy. And we are creating a simple life here in the Anirondacks. But simple doesn't mean easy. Last year, we spent our entire summer building this earth sheltered dome behind us here. And unfortunately, we were not able to get the retaining walls and the dome covered for the winter. So we covered it with tarps, we got the wood stove installed, and we did what we had to do to survive the winter. And we survived. So now we are patiently waiting for our retaining walls to be poured. And once the retaining walls are poured, we'll be able to waterproof and cover the dome with dirt. In the meantime, we had a lot of interest in the comment section about our solar ground mount. So we thought we'd take a minute and uh, talk about it today. And we're going to share why we decided to build it the way we did and how much it cost. There's a mama and baby birds. Yeah, they moved in. They'll be done soon. And then we'll evict them. <laughs> we can't put it on top of the dome because the dome will be covered with dirt. There's no roof. So then we thought about putting it on top of the porch on the south side of the house, but that wasn't gonna be for quite some time. So. And we really needed power right away. Right. And we thought about putting it on the garage roof, but slope isn't right, and it would have required some really serious permits because it's a structure that need, that requires permits. Right, there would have been a separate engineering uh, plan to mount that thing up there, so. So we decided to go with a ground mount. We also wanted it to be a ground mount because it's easier to reach and maintain. We have a lot of snow here in the winter, and it's really convenient to be able to reach those solar panels and keep them clean. Yeah, it just made a lot of sense. I didn't really feel comfortable with the whole roof mount system. A lot of people want to know why we didn't go with a steel ground mount. A steel ground mount wouldn't have provided the amount of shelter that we were looking for out of this thing, which gives us sort of a dual purpose. Another thing people questioned us on was why we didn't do some sort of tracking to track the sun. And yeah, those are great, but there's two problems with those. One, there's a lot of parts that might need maintenance and have problems over time. And again, we wouldn't, yeah, huge <laughs> amount of money on top of it. And we wouldn't have had that extra storage space again underneath. When you drive up our driveway, you can't even tell that this is solar panels. It just looks like a big lean-to. First of all, it faces exactly due south. It also is at an angle of 45 degrees. Now here, our latitude is about 43 degrees, and that would be the optimum angle. However, 45 degrees was so much easier to construct, yeah. honestly. It's just a very minor difference. And that little bit more steepness actually optimizes the panels for the winter right. when we really need more sun. Because the, day, the daylight is shorter in the exactly. winter, Exactly. Right? So. so we just chose to go with simplicity, right? Creating a simpler life. The idea of keeping the panels within reach down low to the ground was makes it easy for maintenance or anything that needs to be done as far as cleaning them or uh, whether there's any uh, repair work that needs to be done, just a whole lot easier. When we made the purchase of the solar system, they gave us the size of the solar panels and the area needed for the roof mount system. And we literally designed this to fit the solar panels that we had purchased. So we designed this mount around that. The area of the roof is 12 by 34 feet. And we ended up with a roof that's about 12 feet high 
34 feet long, eight feet deep. And on the low end, it's about two, two yeah, and a half feet. Two and a half feet off the ground. We also needed to design this thing to withstand some really high winds and some pretty serious frost heaves here. We just really, really wanted it strong, so we chose to use uh, some big six by six posts on footings. They're one foot in diameter. They're 54 inches deep when you factor in the 32 inch diameter big foot that's on the bottom. So it's pretty, pretty solid. <laughs> Once we had the design, we ordered all the materials. We ordered all rough sawn lumber for all the uh, framework, the two by sixes, and the one by fours for purlins. That is some beautiful green lumber. All right, so we picked up all this rough sawn lumber. We saved a ton of money, probably half of what it would cost in a big box store like Home Depot. From like a big box store was the pressure treated six by six posts and all the hardware to anchor them into the footings. We got our posts. Treated lumber, right? Yeah, this we got from the Home Depot. Okay. Or Lowe's, whatever. And we we got, got our headers and roof rafters. That's here, right? Yep. We got some purlins and some extra pieces of uh, two by six. Okay. And two by four. And the roof material. But we're one step closer to getting this ground mount built for the solar. Uh, we went with a simple green roofing because it matches the rest of the roofing that we have. It also allows snow and everything else to slide off much easier. And we really do want to promote that throughout the winter. The gussets and bracing, a lot of it is four by four posts that were sort of repurposed from our property back on Long Island. Use a lot of them in the bathroom too. Mm -hmm. um, but they've become in handy. We save everything. We got a few left. Yeah. We also bought 80 bags of concrete. Yeah. <laughs> we were running out of time come the fall. And but we actually had to hire an excavator to come in. Rich and I are just going to lay out the solar ground mount because they have to dig that tomorrow. Looks good. And they dug all the holes for all the sono tubes and got them all placed in the proper locations. And then Kathy and I came by and uh, with all the bags of concrete and a cement mixer, mixed all of it by hand, filled all the tubes. In one night. Right at the level of the screw. Yeah, so what we did was we got... Uh, there it is, right there. See it? Yeah. My man Steven got these all level and he marked the height where the concrete should be on the inside of the tube. And I put a little screw in there just so we didn't lose the mark once the concrete got yeah. on there. was fun. <laughs> Can't believe we did that. Oh, and again, time continued to tick down toward winter here. So we ended up hiring some construction guys Builders. to yeah, help us get this built. Right. And they were fantastic and they And they were fast. They, they were fast. Did it in like two days. There it is. Not bad. Not bad. That looks like it's going to do the trick. So we got the piece there and down there and
And they loved working with the rough sawn lumber. Everything was straight as an arrow. It was good. Yeah. Unfortunately, when it came time to put the roof mounts on, we realized that nothing lined up with where those bolts were supposed to go. <laughs> the recommendation for the rail system on the, on the roof rail mount system is to sort of stagger your anchor points and make sure you try and catch roof rafters. And we weren't always able to do that, so we added some more purlin so we could make sure <laughs> that we got the rail system mounted onto some solid wood. He's in right underneath. Anywhere that there is one of these on top of a rafter, we can install them there. We tried to put at least one on a post with a rafter, because that's where it's really strong, and then we're scattering the rest of them. Once we got all the bolts and uh, hardware mounted in the proper positions, uh, we did have to uh, call on some help from our electrician and his guys to young, young guys, young guys <laughs> to climb up on that steep angle there and mount everything on the rails, torque everything down, and make all the hookups with the wires, and also secure all the wires very neatly. And they did a fantastic job. They that. really did. He's got to get his hands between here, the one above and the one below. So I think we should go as squeak it to the top as much as you can, and that'll let you drop this and still have a little bit of roof showing. That was money well spent also because they just made it much faster and easier than I could have ever done it. We did a couple of extra things. You took the extra bags of concrete and just threw it on top of the gravel that was down here that we spread down just to make it a little more solid. Instead of letting it just get hard in the bags, we decided to just rake it out and wet it down. And it worked out okay. Not bad. Definitely much harder than it would be. We also added um, this rough sawn lumber on the side. Put some boards across the end of this lean to for the solar, and it looks great. Added bracing, some spacing for airflow for the wood, and it also served as a place to mount our junction boxes and cutoff switch for the solar array. We do have a few plans to do some upgrades to it down the road. We're probably going to build sort of an addition on the roof just to have a little bit more shelter underneath it. And we'll probably put some more planking on the backside and maybe some more uh, something to block the two and a half feet in the front just to keep it more protected from the weather and make it that much more closed in. We made one mistake when we did build this, and that was putting it a little too close to the septic system. So there's a septic lid just a few feet in front of it. The reason why we did that, though, is because we were trying to maximize uh, parking and driveway turnaround space, too. So it right. we was sort of a trade-off. We pushed it as far as we could this way. There's enough room for a 24-inch snowblower or something to get through there. All winter long, it was easy to clean off, except for that one big three-foot snowstorm. Um, yeah, but was... it did, even that snowstorm, within like three days, it was all melted and off. Right. Working underneath it is actually pretty good. We have our wood splitter under there. We processed wood all winter. We didn't need.
need engineer reports. We didn't need blueprints. We didn't need permits. I think it was a smart decision. Absolutely. Yeah. A little more than we wanted to spend, but worth it in the long run. Even the birds love it. <laughs> it's nature approved. <laughs> <laughs> We would appreciate you liking and subscribing and hit that bell. <laughs> and we have a lot more coming to share on our earth sheltered house build here in the Adirondacks. <laughs> and we're trying to hold it together because this is just, this project has become a much bigger project than we ever anticipated. And we're, but we're still happy and we're still plugging along and we're still keeping a positive attitude. Yes, we are. I'm Kathy. And I'm Rich. And we're creating a simpler life in the Adirondacks. But simple doesn't mean easy. See you in the next video. Birds are pooping on my solar panels. You're gonna have to go. Oh look, they're almost big enough to fly. All right, they'll be gone soon.